Good morning traders, my name is Nishal Patel and I'm going to be conducting today's Phoenix Blue trading update. I uh, hope you're all well on this Thursday morning. I um, just want to take you through a range of, of uh, charts today, in particularly focusing on uh, what's important, uh, including some of the key news announcements that happened today. We've got some key news announcements, especially from the ECB, so I think that's what we're going to turn to first. So what we'll do is we'll look at the charts and we'll see and convey how price action should move according to those news announcements. So um, the very first one we should be looking at is if we just flick our chart over to this. Um, right now we're having looking at the euro on the daily time frame. Euro is sitting just above this level at 1.12. Um, five six by the looks of it um now having a look at it it's just propping itself up above that level and um obviously from from yesterday it had moved off that level and it's just literally come straight back to it um we have a key we have key announcements earlier on this uh this morning uh in particularly um in particularly first thing well just before midday on from the ECB and that's a very first uh, announcement uh, announcement coming out on the minimum bid bid rate which is closely followed by the ECB conference pretty much at the start of the American Open um, which is um, also simultaneously um, coinciding with an announcement on the greenback or the USD on unemployment claims um, which is also another which is also key remember we did have NFP data um, almost a week ago now um, and then we have crude oil inventories for those people that are trading um, uh, trading that commodity um, but as I was saying just having a quick look at this chart and understand where this chart will potentially go. Now, as I said, uh, price action right now is floating at 1.12640, apologies. Just, just, above, just above that level of support and resistance right now as we speak, it's just, it's just creating, taking out yesterday's high um, and creating, an, uh, creating a new high for today, um, which is about 10 pips higher than uh, where that level of support and resistance is. Coming up to this higher trend line, um, and by the looks of it, what we're seeing most certainly today and most and most certainly before the announcement right now is definitely a bullish rally. Um, please remember that as this chart goes long, what we're actually seeing is we're seeing a depreciation of the euro. Um, so we're seeing the USD get stronger versus the euro. That's not what we saw yesterday. Um, obviously, we saw um, gains made on the side of the euro. We do have, um, I think, uh, the uh, ECB have got um, to release and to let the market know potentially what's going to happen. I think, obviously, with um, with underlying um, inflation problems as well as growth pro growth problems across the euro uh, across the European states, um, the ECB the ECB really don't have much to turn to considering the fact that they. They have had um, serious bouts of um, quantitative easing. Remember, let's not forget they've pumped in close to a trillion euros um, over the uh, definitely over the last 12 to 18 months um, in QE. And um, it, and remember that we are at very 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 low um, uh, interest rates. So there isn't much they can do um, to surprise their markets in terms of how they're gonna how they're gonna look to combat um, the growth and inflation problems that they have. Um, I think what they're gonna have to do is pull a rabbit out of a hat um, and really surprise the markets in in terms of what they're gonna do. Um, with with everything that's happening on um, uh, on on the euro. And especially the way many traders are projecting this, I think the um, the prognosis for this particular currency pair over the course of definitely the next quarter is most most likely going to be more bearish than it is going to be bullish. We, we and especially if um, the ECB later announce further bouts of QE or any kind of monetary stimulus, and I think that's the case. Moving on to the next chart, and we do have. 
Um, we do have data coming out on the USD, but I'm just having a look on the, the yen right now. Yen's really, um, it really has been making some serious moves. It didn't turn out, and I'm just going to flick straight over to the weekly first. Um, a lot of people were looking for this double bottom to turn up. Um, and realistically, what we are looking for is a break of that neckline or at least for price action to get to that ne neckline for, for it to be an established double bottom. Um, that wasn't the case. Price action really had created a lower high from its previous high. Um, let's not let's not forget it had created a lower low previously. So are we in a situation where effectively this currency pair is back and trending right now? Your um, sorry, the, the, the yen is floating at just over one hundred and one fifty eight yen to a dollar. Um, so really gains are being made on the yen, as we can see just off this lovely inside bar um, some days ago, um, literally has popped itself down. And it's just popped below this 20, um, 20 moving average. Um, and I think what um, many traders have done is look to ride that momentum, um, especially on an intraday basis. Um, I have done so personally this week. Um, and I'm going to be looking at this very closely. Um, especially, it, I think it's really important, especially this month, um, considering we do have um, we do have the Japanese. Um, the, the Bank of Japan coming out and releasing a statement, letting us know potentially what they're going to do. Um, I think bouts of quantitative easing, there were hints from uh, Corona um, of potential bouts of quantitative easing coming into play again. Um, I think uh, with the BOJ in their cloak and dagger approach to, uh, to managing um, their currency and propping it up occasionally, um, I think it's going to be a, li a little more uh, clear um, uh, in regards to their policy because I, I think it, uh, with with everyone turning their eyes to, in particularly the yen right now, um, because realistically this is the only true um, right now trending currency pair that seems to be out there. Um, let's not forget the yen has been ha has been on this long, long uh, trend short. Um, for quite some time now, and you know, on the daily chart, we can clearly see, definitely from from this point here in early Jan this year, um, it's been trending short. Moving over to a weekly, the story story take, takes us back to August, in and around August last year, um, before we see this lovely trend um, trend down. Coming back to its most recent lows where it's been, remember, as soon as it gets to that 100 level, I think we're definitely going to see some kind of, or some degree of um, of uh, interaction with the BOJ um, and, uh, and the marketplace. That's going to be quite interesting. Moving on forward, moving on to the Canadian dollar right now. Uh, the Canadian dollar right now is floating at 1.286. Um, it's uh, looking at this predominantly because let's not forget we did have data coming out um, from CAD that was last night, late last night um, over here in the UK time wise. Um, really all, all it all it had done was prop itself up and pushed and knocked on this 50% Fibonacci level that was drawn off the weekly um, as we can see here. Um, coming back down, it's coming back to that 618 quite steadily, probably looking to see a break and close below that level today um, or prop itself quite close to it. Um, I think it really depends on the US data later on. And um, as we're talking about CAD, I think a good idea is just go back to this uh, WTI. Um, obviously, we do have inventories later on this. Um, this afternoon from the US, so it's going to be it's, it's going to be quite interesting to see how this fares. Um, let's not forget this is a four hourly time frame. I think if we just move over to this daily time frame, I think we can get a clearer picture. Um, realistically, after after pushing down to that forty three dollars a barrel um, price action, or and the price of crude per barrel has has been pushed up another three bucks a barrel over the course of the last four or five days. Um, been some been some really strong and erratic swings on this uh, as of recent. Um, in particularly, which which is displayed on these daily bars. The size of these bars are very very large. Obviously, it's, what what we can see today is it's just started off quite slowly, but the movement most certainly is there. 
Let's also not forget that any kind of movement on the on the greenback is going to have a knock on effect straight on to um, our commodity prices as well. Um, and moving on to, um, I think, a final uh, commodity before we move over to a, a couple of the indexes. I think we should move over to gold because um, gold has had a, uh, a rally. Um, and if we just move over to that now, there we go, right here. Um, looking at gold right now, after testing this, um, we're looking at the four hourly time frame right now. Um, and what we can see is we've seen gold hitting um, some weekly highs here at 1.352. So it's breaking that uh, 13.50 level, um, coming back and just below that right now at 13.4805. Um, so really um, uh, uh, earlier on from the start of the week and just push, pushing this over to um, a daily chart now, uh, earlier on at the start of the week, um, it, um, definitely on Tuesday when we started to see some movement, um, gold had broken out of um, broken out of this little area of um, consolidation, uh, well, uh, I wouldn't call it a consolidation, but um, indecision, I would call it. Um, we had some uh, very indecisive bars on where price action really wants to go. Started to move short, uh, propped itself up off that 382, and then using the 50, 50 moving average to trampoline itself up and above that 350 level on the Tuesday really did come about in it. So um, again, I think that's uh, that's investors switching to um, switching to alternative opportunities where they deem um, to, be, to, to be making more money from. Um, let's not forget there wasn't much else happening on the Monday, um, which is quite common on after an NFP, um, uh, especially with the data, the way it was. I think that people were expecting uh, data which was a lot more substantial in terms of strength and showing showing the strength straight from the USD. I, I, I think it, I think it did put a lot of people on edge, especially with the bounce of data that was coming out prior to that. Um, I, I, that in turn probably gives some food for thought um, for the Fed. I think everyone was looking at a most certain rate hike this month with the first week into the month and already um, those that sentiment has turned from, turned from being positive of a potential rate hike to maybe it's not going to happen this month. And um, that, that sentiment really has, has, has uh, carried off across the board. Um, so what we can see right now, we we're having a look at the UK blue chip index, looking at the FTSE 100. Uh, FTSE is floating at that 6885 level, definitely above that. Um, those those highs um, or what what were all time highs back in July um, for this year, and um, it's really it's really knocking on that door, getting closer and closer to that seven thousand level. I think any kind of uh, any kind of um, strong um, strong strong signals from either quarterly announcements from some of the biggest sectors uh, in the FTSE. Um, I think we should I think we should definitely see a spike on this. Um, let's not forget how it has responded to um, the Asian markets and um, the Asian markets didn't really do too great um, off last night. So I'm not not so sure if um, if that's going to carry on climbing right now. Um, I, and I think the final one we're going to push over to is the Australian dollar. Now, the Australian dollar is really flying um were we, we were potentially looking for this to to uh to come uh to come short and remember this is the weekly time frame so it shows how bullish uh, this week has been after opening up just uh just below that 75 75 level um and then pushing straight up um which is right and right now floating at 77 80 circa and knocking on the door of the 90 really quickly um, doing really well coming up and pushing that hundred moving average um, remember these are exponential moving averages on this weekly time frame we can see that it's um, really doing well there's the daily time uh, there's the daily time frame right now um, let's not forget this has really come about straight off um, the trade uh, trade balance data came out earlier on this morning um, the details of the trade balance were um were 2.41 um and the forecast was um 2.65 please please um please forget uh, please 
don't forget that these are negative levels. Um, so the actual is actually less um, than what was slightly forecasted, um, or I should say more because these are negative. Apologies for that. Um, so it's slightly, it's, it's very good for our for our Australian dollar right now. So uh, very very much a mixed bag. Um, from the week following after NFP, so the, the, the starting of this week. Um, I haven't done too bad myself um, for this week. Um, uh, it's, it's slow and steady, um, which, is, which is fine. Um, but until next time, traders, I hope you've enjoyed today's update. I look forward to speaking to you all soon. Take care. Bye-bye.